Hi folks, in this video we're going to be taking this old Island of Blood Skaven Warp Fire Thrower team and give it a bit of a base update and refresh and put it onto a grimy sewer base. So, without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, I'll be taking an offcut of 3mm cork and I'll be simply gluing this down to a section of the base. I'm going to be doing this in a rough uneven section. To, this is going to be where our uneven sewer tiles and stonework is going to be. And the rest is going to be left as the base to do some water effects later on. So this is fairly straightforward and the cork is quite a porous material. So this should take only a quick press and it should dry very quickly. Once the cork has dried into place, I'm using a hobby knife to score around the underside of it with the base flipped over. I'm then going to use this scoring mark to break off any overlapping bits of the cork, and then I'm going to neaten up with a hobby knife so that it sits flush to the rim of the base. Next, I'm going to add a sewer pipe where sewage and filth is spewed out into the underrunning waters of the mortal realm cities. And to do this, I'm going to use an old brush cap. And this is a nice soft plastic material that's perfect size for what we need. And we're going to cut a small section off using a hobby knife and then split it down the middle in half to get ourselves a nice half pipe. And this half pipe doesn't have to be perfectly neat. It just has to be of a rough shape just so that we can super glue this down and we can cover this up with green stuff, paint and water texture later on. And this is going to be super glued down onto the base. Next, we're going to be making the stone tiles on the top to represent the flagstones on the path at the side of the sewer. And to do this, I'm using good old green stuff. And remember with green stuff, to cut out the middle section between the two pieces as it has already started to cure. It. And always to keep the fingers and the green stuff itself wet whenever you're working with it. Until you get, and mold the two pieces together until you get a nice green ball. With wet fingers, I'm tearing off bits of our green stuff ball and pressing it down onto the top of the cork. I'm looking for this to be about three or four millimeters thick on the top of this. Remember to keep your fingers wet and you can use different types of tools in your fingers to sort of smush together and blend together any join gaps that you might find. And don't worry if they're not too neat. We're going to be scoring into this to make a flagstone pattern later on. So it's just a matter of getting a nice coverage down without too many fingerprints in on it. If you do manage to get some fingerprints, you can always add some texture paint over on this to represent some dirt and grime. Once our green stuff has nicely covered over the cork, we can then come in with the back of a hobby knife and start to score in some horizontal and vertical lines to start outlaying our brickwork. And you can make these as large and as regular as possible, or you can go for something very uniform. The choice is up to you. And it just requires some gentle pressing into the green stuff. And this is why we applied it a little thicker than normal, just so we can really do those defining movements within the green stuff. And once you've scored these marks in, I would avoid trying to touch the green stuff. We want to not leave any fingerprints behind on this, so you may want to leave this to dry before you move on to any other stages. This process can take a while, so I recommend that you're doing these on multiple bases at once rather than trying to do one base at a time, like I'm doing for this tutorial. Lastly, I'm going to cut off a skull of every Wargamer's favourite sprue, the Games Workshop Skull Sprue, and I'm going to add this into the sewer water to give it the emphasis that it's a really toxic, nasty mess and some poor soul has got trapped down here and drowned and eaten alive by the horrible things down here. So to emphasise the depth of the water, what I'm going to do is cut the back of the skull off. This can be quite fiddly, so I'd advise doing a firm grip between your fingers while you make the cut. And cutting off the back of the skull allows us to sit this flush down against the base and really sell the fact that most of the skeleton is submerged under the water. And this will really help sell the illusion of depth. And just to speed things up here, I'm going to super glue this down to the base. 
And once you're happy with the position of this, leave this plenty of time to dry and for the green stuff to set, and then you'll be ready to start painting, which I'll be covering in a further tutorial. If you like this video, why not consider giving a like and subscribing? It's free of charge, it helps me out, and gives you further update in your feed on further tutorials just like this one. And don't forget to come back to see the painting tutorial of this sewer base. Till next time, folks.